Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games while talking game design. And we're back with more Final Fantasy XV. Where Prompto will not stop complaining, no matter what we do. <laughs> there we go. There's another one. <laughs> we, as, we, we took a, a short break in between episodes, and so we, we're covering the, like, one or two minutes of... Uh, lost progress that we had from the autosave and within about a span of two maybe three minutes prompto complained three times <laughs> yep at least i mean it's annoying but it's also kind of funny especially when we make fun of prompto <laughs> it's just it's so easy it's so easy Right. Let's try. Uh, giving up the chase. I personally don't mind either way. Give it up then. So they also kind of sh shroud the map if we actually look at the full thing, right? Yeah. Like it won't show us where we've been or where we oh, haven't been, oh, which this is kind of contrary to the rest of the game where it shows us the map. It just doesn't show us like the hard points. So I, I like this though because it's. I mean, obviously for a dungeon, right? It, kind of is an obvious necessity because if mm. you could just see everything then you'd either only take the optimal path or you just wouldn't feel like you're exploring it's <clears throat> uh, definitely with it you wouldn't feel like you're exploring in addition it does cha completely change the atmosphere this is also a really cool part because when they turn the lights on turn it back on if you weren't in wait mode this would have meant a lot less but since we are in wait mode it immediately starts the wait timer yeah and you're like what is about to happen it yeah, was, it was I, actually really cool timing. I, it, it sort of is. Oh, I just cr crushed by rocks. Yeah, well, that wasn't a good time. I was like, what? <laughs> in in a way, I feel like wait mode actually kind of hurt some of the cinematic quality of that, but it gave you a tactical advantage because you, it allowed you to kind of brace yourself for impact. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get stabbed in the back by things, but uh, it didn't change it, that much. It, it wasn't unbalanced. Yeah. All right, we're just gonna. Sorry, I realize I talk over you a lot in this series. But you're a jerk. <laughs> I get kind of excited about it, and since you're the one playing, I'm like able to just like focus purely on the conversation. God, stop trying to fall on me. Get ah. So goblins in the what was it platinum demo? They would steal potions from you, correct? Yes, they actually still do. Okay, I thought I, uh, so. I ran into some that did it the other time. I was like, oh, okay, so they still do steal potions from you. It's not so obvious when they do, from like, what I noticed. should have gone the other way first. Yeah, you're you're going the correct way, which, let's be it's... real, anyone that dungeon crawls, never go the correct way no, the first time. No, never go the correct way. Yeah. 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 Should have just stuck my hand to the left wall and gone that way. That one should be locked, because I think if you come back around, it's like a short way up. And there's another one over <laughs> to the left that's also locked. I couldn't remember which one. Ah. I find it interesting, though, that they hide some of the elements in here. So if you're relying on spells, you can soak up some of that spell juice. Yeah. There's certain points in the game where they, they tend to do that. It's two Oracle Sentient Coins. All right. It's, um, it's kind of cool, though, because it's sort of like we use these these magic flasks, and this is kind of like an industrial size version of that. Yeah. Actually, that's... Well, obviously, <laughs> gotta use this. I mean... Uh, what was I doing? Uh, Elementsy. Kapow. Elementsy. Yeah, we're gonna have fun with it. We're gonna do like this. We're gonna use Although this, that amount. This area is probably a good place for fire because you get those tight corridors. And since fire kind of lingers on the ground. Also, I think, I feel like has the smallest radius of effect. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, oh no, I'm just gonna like <laughs> use so many of that. It's, some of this unicast yeah did it guys i kind of have fun with unicast especially because sometimes well i guess maybe i felt this way before i knew wait mode was a thing but i'd be like well, i don't know i just it doesn't really matter which spell i use it's still gonna deal a lot of damage yeah <clears throat> um that does nothing that 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 
I don't have enough, like, items. Hard whiskers. Sure. We'll use one of those. Done. Up to two times. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna equip it. Kapow. Who knows what'll happen? But Fun it can happen magic. twice. <laughs> Alright. Um, you're not gonna... So level design in, in places, or in dungeon crawls like this, I always find fascinating because I think the intended design is that... Oh, it opens. So intended design is usually like, they want the player to deviate from the main path and kind of explore and find all the nooks and crannies and secrets. Some games, um, it's really not obvious which is the main path, so you could accidentally take it and then miss out on a lot of free loot, you know? <clears throat> um, so, I, I like looking at games like this because sometimes you can see what tricks they do to try to lure players down the main path, or, or make it more obvious what the main path is. And traditionally, you'd use things like lighting effects, or, um... I don't know, like, visual cues that make it seem more important than other paths. Um, there it is. Ooh. And some other games choose, like, a the turning turning at a branch, right? Left or right. Right is usually the main path. So, like, as a player, over time, I feel like I've always chosen the left path because it's rarely the main one. I mean, that... I feel like that may have been the time point at some time until, like, uh... Game designers was like, eh, but everybody always takes the left path. <laughs> Let's trick them. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know. It's um, I find what they do in this one at least a lot is they'll they'll like put items out to lure you into certain directions. So usually I'll see an item and be like, I feel like that's the main direction you want me to go. Mm -hmm. Well, so. even even in this, I think the two cues we had on what the main path was was climbing through that little uh, rocky tunnel. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it, and, and this, this is when you went up to here and you're like, ah, I don't want to be here yet. Yeah. So something like this is so obviously a transition to a separate section of the level, um, that I think it does a really good job at presenting that. Like, this is the point of no return or, you know, there, you, this is, you haven't, well, hmm. I, you might be able to return from there, but regardless, like, it's a lot more obvious that this is the intended path because it's a unique asset and you don't really see unique assets like that. Ugh. Also, remember our conversation about how they use these transitions to load the, yeah. in the next section? Every time I see it now, I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, there it is. Good <laughs> job, guys. But they do a good job with streaming in the the uh, content. We kind of touched on that maybe like four or five episodes ago. Um, but I don't think I finished my thoughts on it, but... They do a good job making this game seamless by using a lot of tricks like that. I mean, you even see that really with smart driving. with how big the game can get. Yeah, exactly. Especially since there's such huge load times, if you ever hit a load screen, making the rest of the game seamless, I think, is really, really important to making the game kind of have a good momentum. The other thing that I realized, too, that they've used to... Don't jump. Open the... <laughs> All right. Goddamn X button as an action and a jump. <laughs> Always annoying. They so the the door that was closed before, like we keep seeing these green doors, and that's an obviously indicator that 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 is this is where we're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Um. So when you when I walked by just now by one of the the uh, the green door entrances, I'm like, I'm not gonna try to go in this yet, just in case it does open. I want to explore around first nice. because mm. I know that. All right. Wait, mode. Is he crawling out of the ground? Oh, they are. Yeah, they're demons. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Uh, all the like, all of the demons in this, it, like all the other creatures, are considered like animals in the sense that like they're natural, and so they mm -hmm. wouldn't come out of nowhere. Uh, but these guys, yeah, they definitely just. Oh, I guess I never really thought about that. I knew that was the case with the Iron Giants yep. because you find more of those in the middle of the night than really most other enemies. Um, it definitely feels that them. way. I feel like it shouldn't be that way, because there are actually weaker demons that you can fight. I mean, but for some reason, like, the very first ones that I ran into for the longest time were those demons, and I'm like, I can't, I can't fight, I can't fight the Iron Giant. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I think the intention is to, mm. like, really make the player afraid of nighttime travel. Which you should be. Yeah. 
It's, and so I think the expectation is you hit an iron giant once and you go, ha ha, never again. Yeah. Not until I'm level 50 and I can do this. <laughs> Not until I'm screwing around and shooting you with a gun and doing one damage. <laughs> <laughs> and waiting to see how long you have until you die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is no hope. All right. There's that entrance. Let's go. I totally did not realize those doors were green, by the way. Oh, well, why would you? Give me that fire. Boom. All right. I like that you also, when you hit those um, element elemancy sources, that if you're like, ah, oh, there's still one left, I guess I better go make some spells. Oh, yeah. It's like absolute player optimization behavior. <laughs> why, why let it go to waste? Nice uh, hand through the, the wall there, Noct. Um, he's the king? That's true. So he does what he wants. He does what he wants. Oh, this is a trap. Here we go. And... No? Alright, well. There it is. Uh, spiders? Lightning Ooh. bugs? Ow. God damn it. Let me get up. Ah. Dude, did you focus on the task at hand, Noct? Ugh. Fire sword. Fire sword. Fire sword. All right. How do you feel about traps like that? Um, they kind of, they do it in this game to make these areas really feel unique because it goes from like this open world typical fantasy RPG to feeling like a horror game. Hmm. Um, or at least that's what they're trying to make it do. Here, since you haven't really got to see these used... Uh, we'll get no, we'll get rid of this. Uh, ah. actually, you know what? We're gonna give this dude the crossbow, and then give Knock the bio blaster. Yup. Fancy. But yeah, I, I, the traps are interesting to me. I feel like that's them trying to, uh, I guess have a more scripted scenario to get those like what would normally have been a random encounter uh to have to be a, more natural by making it scripted um it's also uh, like a way of like condensing your area and making it mo a more believable environment mm. that you can explore and still initiate fights at the same time yeah that's fair i actually it the reason i i thought about it too is because i i went back and i started playing the um you're not gonna. Oh, interesting. Giant spider. Yeah. But I, I've been playing. It's crazy. I've been playing the old uh, Link to the Past Zelda, and in those dungeons, they have a lot of just like trap rooms. Oftentimes, you'd have to unlock it with a key, which in that game, keys are a valuable resource. Um, so you'd open the door and be like, "I didn't need to waste that key. This is just a room of nothing. Great." Um, which I'm not complaining. I just thought it was a very interesting style of level design because in that game, it didn't make a lot of sense. It kind of felt like a penalty and that it didn't add a lot to the gameplay. Um, whereas in this game, albeit many generations later, I think it's a more natural fit in which Prompto dead on the ground. Of course he is. <laughs> okay. Wow, well, his maybe, danger meter is yeah, almost he's at... almost at... Let's see if I can use a high elixir to actually like, kill him. Yeah, there we go. Hi Elixirs can actually like heal past. They can recover from that. Oh, this wow. is the Bio Blaster, by the way. Like, see Whoa, how? See how sweet. It, it's really good for like doing AOE attacks. Oh. And if you charge it, it can do massive damage. The problem is, notice how I'm just like doing that, like, like that once blast. Every... Yeah, it's it's slow. It only does that blast. Every single one of these weapons does just that. That makes um, sense. So even if I hit equip the auto crossbow, it's still doing the same thing. But if you give, uh, ooh, ooh. if you give um, Prompto the big one, like he actually will do a specific move with it. Huh. All right, you're weak to. I mean, the fire sword is gonna kill you. I'm going do to do this. Sword? I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> As everyone in your party is just like, no! <laughs> Did I get it? At yeah. least it didn't heal her. Although I'm sure Boom. there are monsters later on that if you deal their uh, element that they're strong against, it could heal them. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I found a shield that, like, um, there's a shield later, like an ice shield that 
um, against ice attacks, it actually, if it used against you, it increases the t uh, your recovery time. Oh wow! So it's like it doesn't heal you, but but it, it heals sort you of over. does. Yeah, like indirectly. That's interesting. That fight was another example of like in this game, if you just do the right move, you can kill your opponent in one or two hits. Because like oh, I'm just sitting there really blasting at her, like this is effective, but it's taking way too long. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I got behind her with the big giant fire sword. Well, she's weak to both of those, and I got her in the back with a unit attack, and it was over. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I also like how they do the tiny little spelunking maneuvers right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it like as a way of saying like this is gonna be a thing later in the game. <laughs> we'll just show you a little bit of it. Give you a taste. Give you a taste. So what do you think makes these caves so, or caves slash dungeons so fun? Maybe that's a big conversation for the room we're about to enter, but... Um, I don't know. It's number one, it's it's that rule of like, in design of like, having the weird element. And this is the weird thing. It doesn't fit in any other part of the game. Mm. This is the one that stands out above everything else. It also annoys me that it actually uses a real key. It's a giant... Like futuristic door, door and it uses an analog in a key. world where you can teleport swords, <laughs> and it uses a key that he just like has uh, has in his hand. I don't know. Just see, I like I I would disagree. Except the doors also open like seemingly electronically. If they were yeah. like a swing door, then be like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Maybe it's a really fancy analog key. No, nope. <laughs> nope, just a fancy electric door with an analog lock. Yup. Ah, uh, that's beautiful though. Now I have two things around me. It's gonna be crazy when there's like 12. The baseball cap kind of kills the moment. <laughs> it's perfect, <laughs> is what it is. Uh, it takes me back to our Zysteria playthrough where at one point, Kuja was so upset at us, so uh, but you get random accessories and one of them was sunglasses. And you can cheat. I don't know if this was a mistake on the devs' part or one of the best ideas they've ever had, but they let you modify the accessories. So, of course, me being me, I increased the scale of of everybody's sunglasses to 400% in different ratios. So, like, one person had 400% long, <laughs> one was 400% And did it long. show up during the cutscene? Oh, yes. It That's killed perfect. every single cutscene. And Tony and I were laughing so hard, <laughs> and Kuja was sitting there like, <sighs> "Oh, that's so funny. good. It's not funny. That's so good. That's why we didn't keep them." So I want to point something <laughs> out. I just basically finished the dungeon, and it gives me a chance to return to the entrance. But you don't have to. But I don't have to. Of course, if I if it turns out if you don't know at the time, but you say return to the entrance, well, no, and you you can do that. You can or not return to the title, but there's a. Somewhere is an option that allows me to, maybe it's in a map. Bam, return to entrance. Oh, so I okay. can do it through the map. But it's really strange that they do that because there's still more to explore. Oh, shit. I definitely missed this when I played through this. Whoa. 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 The camera's a little far back for these guys to teleport in. Whoa. What is this? What's this? <laughs> Whoa. Is to keep this out? Oh, what's what? Ooh, is this a secret boss battle? Not sure. You haven't opened it yet? Nope. There is one behind every, uh, every, um, royal arm? cave. Yeah, every royal arm door. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, that, uh, you would have missed that if you just chose to return to the entrance. I mean, yeah, huh, right? I mean, I... I think that's the point, right? They don't want players to find it unless they're really looking for it. Um, so it's a a reward. It's it's a reward for for the players wanting to explore every nook and cranny. Yeah, I guess I think that that reward is just kind of defeated by giving the player the option to just leave. It's like uh, I don't know. It's I, like rewarding you for not yeah. just. Uh, it's weird for not quick traveling out. Yeah what you would normally want to do when you finish a dungeon. I guess that's fair. It kind of discourages that. Do Sky. Episode to Sky. Now it all comes together, everybody. That's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. 
<laughs> they have no idea what to do with themselves. I like too. Noctis just hangs up on everybody. The moment they're done talking, he's like, yeah, hangs up on him. You do that too. It drives me crazy. No, no, it's worse than that. Cause it'd be like, like Dino called earlier. He's like, I've been missing you guys. Making sure you you're all right. And and he's like, you should come visit. And Noctis goes like, he's like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, like he probably Dino probably over. didn't even hear him say maybe. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, gear, Noctis, uh, sort of the wise, or I oh, will get rid of that <laughs> dual cast. Actually, we'll keep that. Get rid of the bio blaster here and pick up the axe of the conqueror, 483 attack power. So, and it increases your strength. Yeah. Now the downside is I have no defense right now at mm. all. I wonder if your attire has anything to do with that too. Don't get hit, man. <laughs> Why would anybody want to hit me with this cool hat on? Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, that's the end of this episode. <laughs> yeah. Question of the day. Why would anyone Dallas. hit Noctis with that hat on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why would you? <laughs> we were goofy this episode, <laughs> but... Uh, maybe, maybe I'll post the question I posed to you earlier. What do you think... What do you guys think makes those, uh, the caves and dungeons so fun? I mean, I guess that's sort of a, um, it's, it's a relative opinion. Well, I would say what makes them, uh, unique and why, why did they choose to make them that way? Um, whether they're fun or not is, is, you're right, is, is up to them, but, uh, they are different. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that I have a giant axe that does all of the damage, I don't need core anymore. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we'll see about that. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Adios.